All right, guys. Um, apparently, I'm technology challenged and trying to get video and audio to sync properly. So I'm just going to show you what's on the screen here. And I was sitting on my computer. Um, I have a process that I go through anytime I'm going to buy something, uh, especially a car, and, and try to figure out what the you know what the smartest way to do it is. And um, I was sitting here thinking, well, maybe I should share this with uh, with my with my crew on YouTube, in that. Um, my wife's lease comes up here shortly on her Ford Explorer Sport, and I need to get uh, a new car. So I have a I have a specific. Um, I prefer to do this by hand, um, where where I, I basically have this layout here that I just keep as a Word document. I know you can use lease calculators, and I could probably create a spreadsheet and. Um, I actually used to have one. I don't know what I did with it, but I, I prefer to actually calculate by hand what you know what you know what the what the what a lease would cost me if I'm going to choose that option. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd take you through my thought process on how I sort of work through these numbers and, and make a decision whether I'm going to lease a car or, or or buy it. And and um, I actually sort of pre let's just put these side by side here. I was sort of running through. Uh, run through the, the options here on and running through the numbers. So what I think I'll do is I'll just sort of take you through these numbers and talk you through sort of the thought process and the, and the calculation behind this stuff. Um, if you've never really looked into a lease, you, you, you need to be, I think you need to be really careful when you go to a dealer because that not, a lot of this stuff isn't published. Um, the, you know, the money factor is not always published. You got to ask for it. The, the residual percentage is not always published. Um, so, and then, then they they don't, I don't think they're, they have to show you what the cap cost is on the, on the sheet. So, um, I always pre-calculate this and then if their payment doesn't match up with mine, then I say, well, you know, what's going on here? And then they usually come back to the, you know, go back and come back. And what I don't want is I, I'm not trying to negotiate some, you know, nickels and dimes, but I, but I don't want to, um. I don't want to go into this blind, and 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 I want to make sure that if I'm if I'm paying a certain rate of interest on the on the depreciation of the car, then I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So you know, the first comment I guess you'd get, and I think about this a lot, is that well, leasing is like renting, right? So automatically, that's a stupid thing to do. You know, wouldn't you be better off buying? And and let me give you my thoughts on so my my GT3 and my M3 I own. Uh, and then my wife's car right now is a lease for a couple of reasons. One, it helps me sleep at night. <laughs> you know, with her car, if there's a lollipop stuck to the door, I, I really don't care. Uh, if there's a scratch somewhere, I don't care. She's curbed a couple of the wheels, I don't care. Because I know that in three years I'm going to give that car back to somebody else and, and I don't have to think about it. So for me, it's peace of mind with my wife's car. I don't feel the need to wash it. Um, she takes it through the drive through and, and then I can concentrate on the cars that I own and actually care about. Um, another reason for me to lease would be if just the, the lease terms were, were fantastic. So if you, if you know the basic math, um, actually her car, the, the, the Explorer Sport right now, if I was going to buy it, which I may, it's still part of the equation that I'm sort of calculating here. If I was going to buy the car, uh, the lease actually is less costly by about 1200 bucks or so. Than, than, than financing the thing at a, at, a, at a similar sort of interest rate. So sometimes a lease and then buyout can, can work out in your favor if, you, if you're able to get a better rate of interest on the, on the, on the loan or on the, on the lease versus the, on the loan of the depreciation versus the, the, the actual sort of financing of the car. So um, you, could, you could theoretically have less cash flow outlaid and you just, you just have to do the math. Uh, on on which is better, obviously uh, you know I, I would prefer to just walk in and and, and pay cash, um, and it's some sometimes I I, I, I could do that, um, but uh, the honest with you, I don't have I don't have a hundred thousand dollars in cash sitting around. It's either invested or or unavailable or doesn't exist, if you will. So. Um, with with cars, you know, typically I'll I'll you know try to pay them off as soon as possible, but but normally I'll I'll finance the car, and my goal would be would be to to from here on out um, would be to just just pay cash for the cars, 
Uh, we can talk about the, the philosophy of that in the future. So I, I, I'm really not an expert in this. I, I know enough to be dangerous. I know enough to, to go in as an educated consumer. Um, so, so don't get all fired up if I say something wrong uh, for, from a you know from a from a, a technical perspective. But I thought I'd I'd show, especially some of you younger guys who who might get go into a dealership and say, oh man, the lease is so much cheaper per month. You probably shouldn't live life on a per month basis. Um, you should you should live life a little differently. So I'm going to take you through this calculation of a Tahoe that I'm considering. Um, uh, the, the cars that we're considering is a, uh, a Tahoe, a, um, for just mainly for towing, another Explorer Sport, um, and uh, that's about it. Those are really the only two, two, two vehicles that interest me. I'd love to get her a Ford Raptor, but she won't go for that. Plus, those are kind of hard to get to unless I was willing to buy a used one. So I went to the dealership the other day and I, I, I talked to him about a Tahoe and the, the price for the Tahoe LT, I think it was, yeah, yeah, LT, I didn't want the LTZ, but LT with 22s, it was white, black wheels, and I did like the DVD headrests and all that stuff. Um, so the question is, you know, if I did sort of take possession of that car, if you will, would I would it be better off leasing it or, or, or financing it? Just, well, it's just for this purpose. I, when I'm calculating numbers, just assume I'm not putting any money down. Okay, um, you you know if you have money sitting in the bank and if you're going to pay three percent interest on a on a loan, then or or three percent on a lease, then you're you're, you're going to be hard pressed to earn you know, three percent on cash. So if you have cash in there, you'd probably be better off putting it down. You know, assuming you had your your safety fund set up. But anyway, I I, I don't really have any advice there for you. If you want to talk offline, we can. But um, really, I'm just going to sort of show you what I'm thinking here on this on this lease lease deal. So, again, I already calculated here on the left, but I'm going to sort of take you through through each calculation one by one, so you get an idea of what's going on. So, so the MSRP on the on the thing is is fifty nine nine fifty. Okay, so that's that's the you know, the price, and you could make whatever price you want here twenty nine fifty nine eighty nine one hundred and twenty nine. You know, whatever the MSRP is. Um, you can put into this into this part of the, the formula. The only exception is if you're buying a really or trying to lease a really expensive car. We can talk about this some other time. But maximum realized or, or sorry residualized, which which uh, uh, word doesn't think is an actual word, but it is MSRP or what, what they call MRM. Uh, let's say for instance you wanted to buy a 911 Turbo and the sticker was 160, and then you optioned it out to 220. Um, the, the the leasing company is not going to take on all those options. You know the options would depreciate much quicker than sort of the general vehicle. So you know you're a a three year old 911 Turbo or two year old 911 Turbo that had a sticker of 220 versus 180 is probably going to sell for some something similar. You know it'd be based on mileage. Uh, if it's sold at auction or traded in or something like that. So, so they're not going to let you get all these fantastic options and then lease it on their dime and then they lose, they lose a bunch of money. So, um, you know, basically what we're doing here when we're leasing is the, the leasing company or the bank is paying $59,950 for the car. So they're paying cash for the car. You're using their money for, for the time that you're driving it. So in essence, you are sort of renting the car, but but or they're letting you borrow the car, if you will. Um, but you're on the hook for it. So so technically, you're an owner. You own the thing, um, but but you're sort of beholden to a lien holder, if you will. Very similar to if you financed it. So with this car, with the with the with the Tahoe, um, with, they they quoted me a 53% residual. So. This number is giving us, or the this gives us the percentage of what the car will be worth after. In this case, this was a 36-month, uh, 15,000 mile lease. So they assume that the car is going to be worth 53% or 47% or less, or 53% of the of the re residualized value um, of the of the MSRP. Sorry, the residualized value. The residual value is 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 47% less. So let me just check my math here. If I take 59,950 and I multiply that by 53%, uh, 0.53. And actually, let's do this. Let's do it on the calculator so you can see the screen here. Um, so let's go um, 59,950 
times 0.53 equals 31. So 31, yeah, so my math is correct. So $31,773.50 is what the car, what the buyout of the car would be, or what the, what they believe the car will be worth uh, in, in, in three years at 15,000 miles. Now, what they're hoping is you don't put 15,000 miles on the car for a year, and they're also hoping that maybe they're, they're shooting a little bit low. Um, so that way, if the, if the, you know, the, the bank takes the, the car back and they sell it at auction, they're hoping they can sell it for 33 or 35 or some number bigger than that, so that way that, that, that's additional profit that they would have. But they're thinking sort of worst case scenario um, that, that the car would be worth 31,773.50. Okay, so the higher this number, the better. So if the residual is 60 or 70 percent, then 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 you would have a, a a higher residual value, which means you would have a, a higher payment or a higher payout if you were to buy it cash. But basically, the higher this number, the less chance you'd have of, of buying out the car at the end of the lease. The less chance it would be that the the, the car was uh, was worth your while to buy out. But it is a better lease if you plan on turning the car back in. It'd be better if this number was higher. Okay, and then the you know, one of the key things you can negotiate. So usually this is set by the manufacturer, from my experience. Um, but but percent off MSRP could be, you know, you could get a discount of some sort. So let's just assume in this case I didn't get any any money off. Um, so my negotiated price was fifty nine thousand. Um, so yeah, this is technically a percentage, right? So I, I didn't get any money off or any dollars off, and let's assume I didn't get any incentives or anything like that. So if there's dealer incentives, you know, whatever, whatever your negotiated price is matters. Um, so in this case, let's assume that I negotiated nothing and I got, uh, I'm paying sticker price for the car. It's a really hard car to get, and, and I'm paying whatever the sticker is. Then another thing that's important is your down payment. In my opinion, I would never put any money down on a lease other than the, the title and registration stuff. So I wouldn't put any money down. Think about it this way. If you crash the car and it's totaled, you know, the insurance company is going to pay back the, 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 the lien holder, if you will. You're sort of cut out of the equation. You go start over. So the nice thing about a lease is you don't end up with a title with a car that has a wrecked title. Um, at the end of the end of the game, but if it is total, then you put ten thousand dollars down to reduce your your monthly payment. That ten thousand dollars sort of disappears into the thin air. You don't get that back. Um, so so that's something that you know you you typically, especially since most leases are at a pretty reasonable rate of interest, you're you're better off keeping the money in the bank, keep the money in your pocket, and don't take that risk that you total the car and and, and lose that money. So I never put any money down. In the and then uh, net cap cost is going to be our negotiated price minus our down payment. So, so the net cap cost is the number that we care about most. So net cap cost would be the MSRP minus the negotiated price or, or minus the, you know, the discounts, if you will, in percent of some MSRP and, and, the, and, and any sort of discount. So we could put percent off MSRP plus um, incentives slash discounts assume they came right off the top so we really don't need that here I would just put it there just to remind me that to add that back in but we can get rid of that let's put incentive discounts rebates And then, so our net cap cost is SRP, 950. So the smaller this number, the better, and you'll see why here in a second. The, you know, the depreciation here would be, would be the, the net cap cost minus the residual value. So this is the amount the car is gonna depreciate. So let's go back to our calculator, let's clear it out, and we're gonna take 59,950, Subtract out 31,733, which again is the, what the car will be worth at the end, which is what your buyout is if you wanted to buy the car at the end of the lease. So we're 28,216.50, so my math is correct. Let's get this over here so we can see it. So 28,216.50. 
to 16. And then in this case, I'm going to do 36 monthly. If you can do 36 monthly, so you can do 24. You can do you know, the 48. You can do whatever you want. 36 seems to be the sweet spot where they give you a decent um, residual. And then, then we'll talk about the money factor here in a second. They'll give you a reasonable rate of interest or money factor. So basically, all I do is I take this 28 to 16 and divide it by 36. So I've got to pay over the course of my lease. I've got to pay for this depreciation. They're just spreading it out month by month. So again, this is money that's being sort of just thrown away, if you will. But you know, the car, as soon as you drive it off a lot, it's worth less. Um, so um, there is a chance at some point that the car could be worth uh, more than what the, what the buyout is. And you could sort of buy it out early if you wanted to or trade it in early. But it just depends. So I take, I take this number, divide it by 36, boom. And I get 783.79. So 783.79. I don't know if you round up or down, but I would assume normal mathematics is less than five, so I'm gonna round down. I'm not worried about a penny or two. So my my just my depreciation payment in this particular example is 783.79. So you can see here, if this number was higher, if this number was say 60 percent, then 59,950 times 0.6 minus 59,950 would be 23,000 divided by 36. So my payment would be 100 and something dollars lower. So if my residual was 60% higher, so if the, if, the, if the value at the end of the lease was higher, I don't have to pay as much because I'm not financing as much or I'm not, I'm not paying for as much, as much depreciation if you will. So, so that's the, the monthly payment for the, for the depreciation. So, so really, theoretically, if, if you bought the car at this, you drive it exactly 45,000 miles, you turn it in, the bank takes it to auction, sells it for thirty-one seven seventy-three fifty, then they, then they break even, right? So they don't, they don't make or lose any money on this, on, uh, on the depreciation. Now they're at risk in that maybe the car has a, has a wreck title, uh, maybe um, you know, maybe uh, maybe you did put uh, more mileage on the car, so they would charge you for those miles um, in order to sort of help offset some of the cost of of, of, of how much they're going to lose when they take it to the to the auction to sell it or try to sell it on the lot. Um, but uh, typically, a dealer isn't going to own the lease. It'll be uh, either the manufacturer or a finance company. So the finance company is not in this for free. So this is where it gets a little confusing. You have to pay interest on it. It's it's, it's much different than, than the interest that you're paying on a on a purchase. One main advantage to a lease is I don't have to pay the interest up front. So notice uh, I bought the car for fifty nine nine fifty. Normally you'd tack on six percent. So you'd be tacking on thirty six hundred bucks in tax right off the bat if you're at six percent. So with with a lease you're only going to pay tax per month. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But you are going to pay interest on the average balance. So you're basically paying interest on the residual, but they're also having you pay interest on the, on the, on the loan, on the whole, the whole amount. So it looks like you're paying double here, but, but really, uh, forgive me, I'm not an, an expert in this, but um, to, to create the finance cost, what you do is you take the 59.50, and rather than do that, I'll just add it on my calculator here. I take 59,950 and I add in the residual, which is 31,773,50 and I get 91,723,50. So my numbers are correct here. So I'd probably just be better cut and paste. Control C, Control V. Okay. So so I'm, I've got to pay interest on the average daily balance of the note. Uh, and the way that the, you calculate this out is via what's called the money factor. So if you want to sort of figure out what the, what the, what sort of the going rate or what the, what the, the, the actual rate of interest you're paying on your, on your monthly finance fee, um, you, would, you would multiply the, the, um, the money factor by a, by the by the formula of 2400 so I, I don't I don't know how to explain money factor I'm sure if we looked it up we could and I know I've looked it up before but I just don't know it off the top of my head in this case the money factor was 0 
um, from, from, from Chevy. The question is, and this is where you have to get online on Edmonds and things like that, is, is the dealer marking up that money factor? The dealer usually can't mess with this, um, but sometimes they can mark this up, and this is where sort of the finance manager would make extra money, is he can mark up your money factor, which then in turn drives up your interest rate. So in this case, if I take 0 0.001 and I multiply that by 2400, again, don't ask me why, just do it, your rate of interest is 2.4%. So, you know, very reasonable rate of interest. So all I do is I take the net cap cost plus the residual, I multiply it by the money factor, and I get my monthly finance fee. So let me just do the math here just to check it, make sure my work is good over here. So I take 91,723.50, and I multiply that by 0 .001. So I'm at $91.72 per month. $91.72, I'm going to round down here. So over the course of the 36 months, the lease company is going to make 3300 bucks in interest over the course of this 36 months. So you can see why you know, a, a lease company, if they, can, if, they, if they do this right and they convince you to buy the thing and then they can make a few grand here and they make a few grand here, uh, they tie their money up for a little while, <clears throat> even at a low rate of interest, it's still a pretty profitable venture for the lender. Um, but if these numbers work out, like I don't know that I'm gonna, I don't know that the lease, this lease is all that great because the money factor is kind of high, not high, but it's not great, um, and and the and the and the residual is not so great either. So I don't know that I would lease this car. Um, usually, you'll find that at the end of a model year cycle, you know, they'll they'll really sort of push a you know a solid uh, solid lease terms, but. Um, really, it just comes down to you know, how much am I paying per month versus actually buying the thing. Um, you, know, I, you know, if it's somewhere close, within 150 bucks or so, I'll usually just buy the car uh, and then take my chances. So, so now I now I got a 91 dollars 72 month monthly finance fee, and I have to add that to my monthly depreciation payment. So I'm paying 783.79, 783. 79 and I'm adding the 91.72 so I get 875.51 875.51 that's a lot of freaking money right <laughs> so I'm basically throwing 875 bucks a month away um, and the question is would this you know would I be better off buying this and if I were going to sell it in three years um, would I be better off leasing it versus financing it? And I'll try to, I try to make sort of guesses on that. The, the main advantage to a lease, as long as you don't screw the car up too much, is you just give it back to them. Um, whereas, and then if they make some money, I'm cool with that. As long as I've sort of calculated that this 875 bucks a month is, is reasonable for me to, to fit into my cash flow. And, and like in my wife's case, she does some photography. So I'm able to offset some of that with you know, sort of a mileage deduction. Um, but um, but the you know one of the one of the key advantages of the monthly payment is I'm not I'm not financing the thirty six hundred dollars in tax up front if that makes sense so I'm simply paying tax on each 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 month so if I were to sort of buy out the lease or break it early I'd have to pay tax on whatever I buy the car for um, so so um, you know technically speaking if I were to if I were to sort of trade the thing in early then I wouldn't have paid as much tax I'd just start paying tax on the new car. Um, you don't have to pay tax up front or in arrears. You just have to. At least I don't think so. I mean, they don't hold me to that. And I've never, I've never, never had to had to do that. So um, in this case, you're going to pay six percent tax. So 0 0.06 times 875.51. So my tax is 52. Uh, 52.53. Yeah, I was right. 52.53 per month. Okay. And then I, my total monthly payment is the is the is the uh, is basically the monthly depreciation plus the finance fee plus the tax. So I get eight seventy five fifty one. Just add eight seventy five fifty one to that. Equals nine twenty eight oh four nine twenty eight. Let's just round it up a penny because we've been rounding down nine twenty eight oh five. So, so that's my monthly payment on a $60,000 car 
with a residual of 53%, a 36-month term with 15,000 miles, and I'm, I have a money factor of you know roughly two point. My money factor is 0 0.001, so roughly 2.4%. So normally you're going to have to pay tax, your title registration and other fees. Let's say there's a dealer fee. I mean, you can sort of argue whether you pay that or not. And um, so dealer fee, ta uh, title registration, depends on what state you're in, but let's just say that's a thousand bucks. Um, so again, I don't want, I don't want to put any money down because I don't want to lose that money later. I'd rather just keep it in my account and, and, and pay more per month, even though this feels more painful. Again, don't live, live month by a monthly payment do what's right is my philosophy. And so, so the, you know, I got to pay them, let's see, I got to pay them, uh, what, uh, uh, roughly 1900 bucks, 192804. Cause I'm going to usually have to pay the first month's payment and then the thousand bucks. So I'm going to write them a check for that. I'm going to walk out with the car. Um, and then they'll, the first, the, 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 this after the first month and I get a bill for, for 92805 and I just keep paying that. At the end, I have a choice to buy it out for 31,000 bucks if I want to, or I could, I could just give it back to them and let them figure it out. You know, let them, if they can make some money on it, great. If not, then that's their loss, not mine. So the three year cost of ownership here would be, you know, your thousand bucks plus your $36,928 a month payment. So let's do that. Oops. 928.05 times 36 would be 33.409 plus my roughly thousand dollars in cost. So let's say over that over the course of the lifetime of the car, over that over that 36 months, it cost me 34,409 dollars and 80 cents to buy to 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 rent the thing, if you will, or to in this technically own the thing. You know, I'm insuring it, I'm registering it, it's in my name, uh, and then with a lien against it from the leaseholder. So, so that, that 34 grand is gone, it's vaporized, you know, disappears. So if you're buying new cars all the time, it just depends. It depends on the type of car you're buying. Like, buying, like for instance, my GT3, um, it's much better to buy the thing because of, well, one, because of M MRMs, uh, and two, uh, because the car holds value, I'm not going to drive it as much, so it, it would kind of be a waste to lease the thing. If I were to sell the thing, I could probably sell it for, for what I paid for it today or close to it. So so I would be, if I were leasing the thing after three years, if the thing's worth $5,000 less than what I paid for it, but yet it cost me $60,000 to own the thing, just it, in that case, just, just not smart. Also, you know, in this Tahoe's case, you know, I would guess that if I bought a $60,000 Tahoe and let's say that I only put 10,000 miles on it, I would guess that it would probably be worth more than this. Um, so, so when I'm crunching my numbers, what I would probably do is go to KBB and pull it up and see, you know, see what, uh, what, what, what current ones, what current three-year-old versions are worth with say 30,000 or 35,000 miles on it. You can just try to get an idea. I don't nickel and dime this stuff too much because remember the first reason why I would lease for her is so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to wash it. I don't care. You know, by the time it starts to look ratty, I'm giving it back. Uh, what I will usually do, like for her Explorer, I opticode it. That way, it decreases the odds of it being all swirled and scratched out because I do want to take care of it at, like it's my own, um, but but not have to stress out about it. So you can see this, you know, this this sixty thousand dollar car has a nine hundred dollar a month payment, you know, which makes me cringe, um, you know, especially a car that she doesn't really care for or care about. You know, the base price on these is going to be around forty eight, and then when you, once you add the DVD headrest monitors and twenty two inch wheels um, and the towing package, you know, it, it adds another ten grand to the thing. Um, so I, I'm not sure that I want to do this. Um, considering that the Explorer Sport loaded with everything, this isn't even loaded. Um, when you get up to the sort of the Denali, GMC Denali's and things like that, or the LTZ version, you're you're, you're talking seventy thousand. Um, whereas I can get a pretty loaded Explorer Sport all-wheel drive, and again, this is a two-wheel drive. Um, you're talking um, fifty thousand bucks. So. Uh, and then I think the residuals are much higher. So I have to get the numbers for the Explorer Sport before I sort of make a decision. I'm just start, start to try to, I'm just starting to rough this in because her, her lease payment or her lease it, it comes due here shortly. I may actually buy it out because the car is worth about 31, the buyout's 26. Um, um, if, I, if I put in what I've paid over the three years 
plus the buyout, it was, like I said, it was about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 less than what I would have paid for the thing had I financed it. Um, you're still going to end up paying the same amount of tax, um, but but it's it's you get to sort of spread it out and just from a cash flow perspective, um, sometimes leasing can make sense. You know, her current lease is five hundred and ninety bucks a month, so that's that's a huge jump. So you know, the first thing I would do is say, well, I'm not paying fifty nine grand, you know, and and I would say, look, what are you what are you what are you going to do for me? I mean, they give these American cars away. Why? Why would I pay sticker price when I don't even pay sticker price on a BMW? You know, so as much as I hate to negotiate, I think that's something that that, that would certainly make a change. So actually, while while we're talking about, it, let's do that. Let's let's assume that that, that the residual uh, the the residual percentage is the same. Um, so let's assume the residual value. So notice the residual value is above the net cap cost because the residual value still doesn't 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 change. That's you're still paying fees on the MSRP and residual value on the average balance. So you're still going to pay a finance charge for 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 the whole for the whole the whole cost of the car. Okay, but if you do get a reduction in price, so let's say that I got uh, five percent off MSRP. 0.00%, which might be a little ambitious. Uh, let's just say it was 5% total. So all my incentives, discounts, rebates, the whole thing was, was 5%. So 59.50, oh, let me use the calculator on the computer here. So 59.950 times point, we'll just do point nine five would mean that my negotiated price is fifty six thousand nine fifty two fifty. Okay. Still not gonna put any money down because that's just not smart. So my negotiated or my net cap cost is fifty six nine fifty two fifty. So my depreciation changes. My residual value doesn't change. Because I don't, I don't, I don't do a residual percentage off of the net cap cost. I do residual percentage uh, or residual value off of. Uh, I calculated off of MSRP. So my fifty six nine fifty two minus my residual value thirty one seven seven three fifty equals. Twenty-five thousand one seventy-nine. So this is why it's so important to negotiate, and I divide that by thirty-six, and my monthly payment's gone down to six ninety-nine. So what is that? That's eighty-four bucks a month. Six ninety-nine forty-one. Pretty significant difference. Now you know we're talking a five percent discount. So what are we talking about here? We're talking what? Uh, uh, five percent of sixty thousand, three thousand bucks, right? So that three thousand dollars is three thousand dollars less that I have to pay. So three thousand uh, divided by thirty-six is uh, what? Uh, what is that? Uh, roughly a hundred bucks a month, or eighty, eighty-four bucks a month. So, so that that that's money back in my pocket that that that, that I don't have to worry about. And then this number doesn't change, so we're still paying. Oh, I'm sorry. It does. I'm sorry. The the because we are paying less, um, this would change. So the net net cap cost is added, and this is why I always keep this little this little formula here, so I, I don't screw this up. So I take the fifty six thousand bucks, and I add it to the thirty one seven seventy three. Fifty six nine fifty two fifty plus thirty. One seven seventy three fifty, and I get eighty eight seven twenty six. So obviously I'm going to pay less in interest as well. Money factor. Let's assume it stays the same. So I'm going to multiply this by point zero zero one, and I get eighty eight seventy two. So it'll save me a few bucks a month. So my monthly payment plus six ninety nine forty one is now seven eighty eight. So almost a hundred bucks a month less.
by getting a 5% discount on the car. And then my tax will go down a little bit times 0 0.06, just assuming that's what your rate is. Sorry if you're in California or in New York City, 470.29. So now my payment plus 788.4. Four is eight thirty-five. So again, almost a hundred dollars a month less. Eight thirty-five forty-three. Let's multiply that by thirty-six. Add in a thousand bucks. So there's roughly, you know, including the finance charges. So you know, again, you got three grand off, which saved you another roughly three hundred bucks over the course of the, the lease as well. Um, so your total cash outlay is thirty-one thousand dollars versus thirty-one oh seventy-five point four one versus thirty-four four oh nine. So you know, pretty significant difference by getting a you know a discount off this MSRP. The thing you need to be careful about, why you need to know this stuff, is that one you got to figure out what the money factor is, and they, I don't know that they have to tell you, but I'd walk out if they didn't tell me what that was. Maybe they do, but I don't think they do. Um, and and you know, it's, there's certain things they have to tell you. Basically, what they have to tell you is the monthly payment. They don't have to tell you the rest, from what I understand. So I want to know what the rest is, and if they're not willing to deal, then I'm going to go find someone who's going to tell me. Because the last thing I want to do is they say, well, you know, we negotiated the price down to 56952 uh, and 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 yet the monthly payment was still 928 because they marked up the money factor you know, and made a bunch of money on, on the financing. So, so you know, the bank that they're going through will will give them a cut of this of the of the interest, and the higher they that they mark this up, the more money that you know the finance guy and the dealership's going to make. You know, I'm all for dealerships making money. Um, and this, of course, would go down to eighteen thirty five forty two. I'm all for making money, but I mean, come on, I mean. You, 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 don't, you know, don't screw. You're making money in this deal, you know. So, so again, they're making this. You know, the bank is going to make this. They're getting a cut of that. So the dealership's going to make some money there. The bank's going to make some money there. The bank's probably going to make some money because they're probably being pretty conservative here. And and so you you really need to make sure that you're not getting hosed if you're doing a lease. So maybe if I got some money off, I mean, now I'm talking, you know, we're talking a little bit more realistic. Again, a $60,000 car. Um, my Explorer had a great lease, to, had great lease terms in that it was a 57% residual. The money factor was somewhere around 0 .0005, I think. Um, so my finance charge is extremely low. So on my $50,000 uh, Explorer Sport, I'm paying 590 bucks a month. That was just so much more cost effective than than, than buying the thing. Um, so so that's that's something to be aware of. Um, again, I'll probably maybe I'll do another video on MRM at some point. But MRM, the problem with MRM is if you if you price it up. So let's say a a Carrera S, you auction it out to one hundred and thirty five thousand. But the maximum residualized value is uh, the most they'll allow you to lease is one hundred and thirty thousand. So. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the, again, the Carrera S was 130000 The most they'll allow you to lease is 115000 So the, they'll, you'll only be able to sort of make this, the $115,000, um, and, and yet you'll have to add in, you'll be, you'll be paying for the 100% depreciation of that extra fifteen dollars um, so, so they're depreciating all those extra options that you bought, assuming they won't be worth anything at the end. So if you want something fancy like some special leather or something like that, that, that really they'll just sort of make you pay for that dollar for dollar if, you, if, it, if it sort of jacks it up over a certain price point. I can show you how that works in a more complicated calculation, but I think I've peppered your brain with enough stuff here. Um, the other thing is uh, MSDs, maximum security deposits, if you're buying a BMW, which I'm not in this case. Um, and some manufacturers, you have to ask about this, will allow you to do this. But it basically allows you to buy the money factor down, so you can buy this down. So every every MSD in this case, one MSD would be 800 bucks. So you'd have to give them 800 dollars, and then it would buy this rate down by 0 0.0007, right? So it buys the interest rate down a little bit. It's kind of like buying points down on, on the house. 
Um, so, but the difference is here, the MSDs, you get that money back at the end. Um, so assuming, uh, I, I think even if you totaled the car, I think you still get that back. I, I think it may work out that if you total the car and they didn't get enough, that, that some of those MSDs are, 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 you know, so let's say the insurance company only paid, paid out a certain amount, then, then, then those, those MSDs, you'd, you'd, you'd eat those. Um, the, 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 the finance company would get them back. But assuming you're in good standing, your insurance company buys out for what the, whatever the buyout was at the time, which would have been the remaining payments um, plus, the, plus whatever the buyout or residualized value was, then, then, then you would get your, your maximum security deposits back. So chances are you're going to get those back. So it's a way for you to put down, you know, in this case, you can put down, like BMW allows you to put seven of them down, uh, which would reduce your, your interest rate by quite a bit. Would reduce your interest rate by, so that would be, and again, I might do another video on this if you guys care. Next time I buy a BMW, I'll show you how this works, but 0 0.00049 times 2400, which saves me 1.17% in interest. Um, so 1.17% in interest on, on, on this residualized value um, would be would be pretty significant. So point zero 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 four nine times eighty eight seven twenty six would mean that I'm going to save about forty three bucks a month in financing fees times thirty six. So that's fifteen hundred dollars that I would be saving in, in, in total cost of, of, of finance fees. Uh, and, and if I divided that over the outlay of, you know, in this case, 800 times, I don't think sales tax is included in this. Um, so 800 times, seven, because I could put out, so I'd put out 5,600 bucks. So that's a pretty darn great rate of return if I'm making, if, I, if I'm saving $1,500 to lay out, if I lay out $5,600 and save $1,500 and then at the end of I get my $5,600 back, that's a pretty darn good deal. Am I doing that right? So $800 times seven, yeah, it would be $5,600. So I'd have to lay out basically seven monthly payments up front, you write them a check for $5,600, and then I get that $5,600 back at the end when I turn my lease in. Uh, and then, or I can apply it to the next car if I wanted to, uh, and then I are basically earn fifteen hundred dollars off of that that fifty six hundred by buying down the money factor. Now it doesn't do you any good to buy down a money factor if the dealer's marking it up. So um, you need to make sure that you're getting whatever sort of BMW's money factor is. Anyway, I know that's probably more confusing. We can talk more offline about that if you'd like to. Just shoot me an email, and I'll, I'll help you out if you're buying a BMW. I, I don't know anybody else that does the, the MSDs. Um, but uh, I know that you know if you're buying a high-end car, MNR, MRM becomes important, a Maserati, a Porsche, something like that, uh, even certain BMWs. Um, or if if you again if you're buying a, a BMW, MSDs are, are important. And I can I can teach you the best way to buy a BMW because I bought a few of them. And, and, and there's you know, if, you, if you don't know, there's there's certain ways to buy it that uh, you don't have to haggle and screw around. You can you can get one, get a Euro delivered if you want to. It doesn't it doesn't really cost anything extra. It actually saved you a large percent. So thanks for watching. I hope that hope that makes sense. Um, again, I'm, I'm not an expert in leasing, but I, I do know quite a bit in order to, to show up and know what my monthly payment's going to be. Um, and then it also helps me to, to, to fumble through the numbers to see if it's worth it to me to rent the car, if you will, or, or, or lease the car. Um, rather than buy it, if, if again, if the peace of mind factor and, and then the monthly outlay of cash versus cost of ownership, you know, if those numbers work out for me, um, then I might, I, I might consider leasing it. And I'm almost always going to pay a premium over, for a lease over what I would if I just financed the thing. But it takes, again, the risk of totaling the car out, it takes the risk of, of lollipops being stuck to the door and me having a total mental meltdown. So, you know, sometimes it can be worth it for, for someone like me to, to, to lease a car for my wife or, or if I intend to turn over the car, you know, in, in short order uh, and, and, and don't plan to put a lot of mileage on it, then it can make sense. Um, but it just, it's, again, it depends on the factors, depends on the, the price you're getting. And, and I, would, I would, before I showed up at the, at the dealership or after I bought or before I bought the, showed up to buy the car, 
I would want to know all this stuff before I go into it. And it, this, if I'm not talking you through this, this takes me 15 minutes. You know, once I decide the car that I want, um, then, then, and this might make the Explorer Sport more attractive if, if the, you know, the lease terms are much better, uh, then I might, you know, I might consider doing that. Because um, again, it's not necessarily about the monthly payment, it's about the cost of ownership. It's about the cost of the lease and how much money am I throwing away. You know, if, if the monthly ma payment's high but the buyout is also high, um, you know, I might not be throwing quite as much money away. I might go buy the car out and it really just depends on, 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 on the situation. So anyway, that's my thoughts on leasing and, 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 and I'll do a video on, on the difference on the same car with, with financing if you want to stay tuned and, and, and catch up on that one.